Well, if you're like me, I love everything to do with bass fishing. No big surprise there, right? Well, there are some lures out there that have come out over the years that changed everything. Lure innovation is just a super interesting topic. And in my opinion, these three right here were game changers. You know, every year at iCast, new products come out and oftentimes they're just slight variations on things that already exist. But these three, they were totally different and something that we as anglers had not seen before. The first one, is the Senko. So Gary Yamamoto, okay, back in the mid 80s, he was trying to create a lure or improve upon the very popular Sluggo. I remember watching Hank Parker fishing the Sluggo on TV when I was a kid. Boop, I gotta have that. Well, he wanted to do something similar and adjust it. Well, he happened to be using a Bic pen, okay? You probably remember those old school Bic pens with that very distinct shape to them and it got his brain to thinking and he ended up creating a mold that you know produces what we now know as the Senko or the stick bait the soft stick bait and it just changed everything and uh, Gary Yamamoto quickly figured out that it was a better finesse type of allure than like a soft jerk bait type of allure. And I find this really cool as well. So his son actually named it. He was trying to find a word in Japanese that meant flash. And there was quite a few of them, but one of them is Senko. And that is the one that stuck and the rest is history. We know that pretty much every manufacturer out there today has some sort of soft stick bait. Well, number two has to be the bladed jig or the chatterbait. So Ron Davis Sr. had been tinkering with this lure design for a long, long time. And then it was first available for sale in like 2004. Well, in 2006, Brian Thrift won an FLW event on Lake Okeechobee and talked about it, okay, in his press conference. And it just went crazy. It wasn't long and the Davises, Ron and his son, had orders for something like a half a million lures. Now think about it, if you're in their situation, can you come up with 500,000 components for this? I mean, cash flow would be a huge issue and it was. And then we know that down the road that uh, Z-Man actually, you know, purchased the rights to manufacture that lure and they had the resources and capital to mass produce the bladed jig. And just like Gary Yamamoto's stick bait, there are so many versions of bladed jigs out there on the market today. And I remember the first time I saw one, I was really hesitant to try to use it. I think like maybe many of you were as well, but boy, I'll tell you what, it is way more versatile than we give it credit for. It can be fished in so many different types of situations. And it is one of those lures that I now have a ton of confidence in, but yes, it was a game changer. And the third one that I want to talk about is actually kind of fallen out of favor for a lot of anglers now, and that is the spinnerbait. You could probably go back to 1951 and the Hildebrandt Company um, would probably be credited for some of that original spinnerbait design. And, you know, I think back to something like a beetle spin, right, with that, that smaller, you know, Indiana, Colorado type blade. There were a lot of spinners out there on the market like that. Well, an Alabama angler by the name of Bill Huntley is one that is often credited for several major advancements in the spinnerbait world. One is the swivels, those ball bearing swivels. Two is using a stainless steel arm as opposed to the piano wire, which was very popular up until that point. But the big one was that willow leaf blade design. The willow leaf is such a standard in the spinnerbait world, but at one point it didn't exist. Well, after those little modifications happened with the bait, all of a sudden spinnerbait manufacturers started popping up all over the place. And this was back in the era of what we now know as the legends of bass fishing. You know, your Roland Martins, your Hank Parkers, your Bill Dances, they started winning some tournaments on a consistent basis with spinnerbaits. And like the other two, the rest is history. 
Speaking of spinnerbaits, if you'd like to watch a video on more advanced spinnerbait tactics, go ahead and check this one out right here. Make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.